cheered on as U.S. gymnast Simone Biles made her Olympic comeback today, taking a bronze medal in the balance beam competition. It was the defending all-around gymnastics champions only individual event in the 2020 Summer Games after mental health issues forced her out of contention for team and all-around honors. Her decision to step aside, though, sparked a frenzy of conversation, pointing out the importance of athletes' mental health, as well as many people sharing their opinions about expectations and whether or not this means she is dedicated to the sport. Well, psychiatrist Dr. Daniel Bober joins us now to talk a little bit more about this. And I think that, you know, it really got us all talking. Her decision got us all talking about not only athletes, but, you know, everyone, sort of how we um, judge people um, and judge their dedication to their sport or to their job and based on how much they're willing to sacrifice in their personal life and sacrifice their mental health to a certain degree. So, you know, society can sometimes treat athletes like, you know, modern day, almost superheroes or like machines, like they're invincible. Uh, a lot of people praise Biles for her decision. Um, but I want to talk a little bit more about the type of pressure that these high-level athletes are under. And I was thinking, doctor, you know, not just are they under um, pressure physically because they're on the world stage, but we add all this additional stuff onto, you know, what it means to be Olympian, expectations about the types of role models they should be beyond the sport in a way that I think we didn't do, I don't know, to athletes maybe 40 or 50 years ago. Now, thanks to social media, we all have this like really intimate access to their personal lives and we know so much more about them. And I can't imagine the strain that that must put on them. Yes, yeah, Marie. I don't think anyone really realizes what it's like to be in that bubble and to live in that pressure cooker. Uh, I have treated elite athletes before and for some the pressure can be unbearable. And let me just say that Simone Biles is a true champion and a hero. She is someone who has competed and won multiple gold medals. She competed with broken toes and both feet. She competed with kidney stones. She's a sexual assault survivor. And she has given millions of people a voice and told them that they need to make their mental health a priority. So in my opinion, the other day, she won the gold medal and the event was life. <laughs> Amen to that. Um, Biles had said that she got a case of the twisties, which contributed to her decision to pull out of events. And that has something to do, as I understand it, with, you know, when you're in the air and you're flipping upside down, you really have to have a, a real sense of where you're going to land, where the bar is, that sort of thing. And as soon as you kind of lose that mental focus, um, you know, fear can set in. And because it's a legitimate fear, you could injure yourself. Um, can you give us a little more insight into the sort of mental blocks that athletes can go through and how her brain and body need to be connected in order to be successful. It's not just about her physical ability. No, it's really all about mental focus. It's making that connection between your mind and, and body. And when you have those doubts mm -hmm. or you have that anxiety and that panic sets in, uh, it can obviously affect your performance. But that's the point of being on a team for your other people on the team to carry that torch and step in when you're having trouble. Um, I'm sure that you perused uh, the internet during this whole thing. Um, we already know that there's a lot of stigma surrounding mental health in general. Um, people often, you know, not only do they not want to admit that they need help, sometimes they don't want to even admit to themselves that they may have a problem. And there were keyboard warriors out there typing away their disappointment um, because of what, you know, with Biles, that, you know, she shouldn't have gone to the Olympics if she thought she was having issues. Uh, there's also a Sort of, sort of expectation to be sort of tough, right? The, the proof that you're dedicated to your vocation is that you're willing to sacrifice yourself to a certain degree, completely disregarding the amount of sacrifice that it takes to get to this level of being an Olympic athlete and then stay in Olympic form this year in particular for an additional year. Um, how does this contribute to, you know, an athlete's mental health, all that chatter around them, all the stuff online um, uh, and, and the stigma that we're all too much aware of? Well, Emory, this case exemplifies the stigma of mental illness. And I ask you this, if Simone Biles had twisted her ankle or had a fracture, hmm. would she be judged the same way, right? 
because she put her mental health first and made the personal choice and made the human choice to step away, she's called a quitter and she's judged. But if it was a twisted ankle or a fracture, people would have reacted very differently. So that tells you all you need to know about the stigma of mental illness. Yeah, that's so true. In fact, she made it a point of coming out and saying when she announced that she was withdrawing from the first event um, that it was not because of a physical injury, because that is always the assumption that, it, you know, something must be not just sort of bent, but broken in order for you to pull back. And and she said, yeah, something's broken and it's not my body and it's as significant. Um, Viles chose, though, to participate in the balance beam final. She got the bronze medal for it. And I thought to myself, man, like this is it's such a great, I, I know it's more than a story, but it's such an incredible story arc um, of sort of taking the time out to make sure you're okay, but then still kind of moving forward, overcoming whatever hesitation she may have to do something that's good for her as well, which is to compete. Um, can you comment on the tenacity that it takes to return while, you know, in the midst of this raging conversation about your mental health? It's a story of human triumph, right? And it's a lesson that we can all learn. Yeah. Think about how much of us are out there thinking that we are defined by our jobs, right? It's not who we are. It's what we do. It doesn't define us as a person. And in this country, it's become all ego. We are, th this work-life balance has been totally disrupted, and we feel like our jobs are defining who we are as a person. So I think that's the lesson here. You have to make your mental health a priority, and your job is just something that you do. It is not who you are. Yes, Dr. Bober, thank you so much. There are people out there that really needed to hear that from you. It's not just for the athletes, but everyone else as well. Um, thank you so much. It's my pleasure, Emory.